I love this laughter already. So <laughs> I don't know what it's about, but I, it's laughter already. <laughs> so, and uh, welcome everyone uh, to uh, this one, this wonderful service. This is a pulpit exchange. And Sandra and I were planning to do this, I believe, around the April 20th of 2020. And we all know that did not happen. So after three years, we finally get a chance to switch up. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Reverend Fraser Williamson, and I'm the minister at Powassan United Church in Chisholm United Church, where Sandra is this morning. And with this pulpit exchange, there's four churches involved, and three out of the four did not have power this morning. So I'm happy we have power here, and I got the PowerPoint presentation, so we will, uh, we will have that. So we have um, our announcements. Um, one of the key things, there is not a photo shoot today. So if you dressed up for it, you're going to have to dress up another week to do that. <laughs> and um, we do have a worship committee meeting coming. There's a ministry and personnel meeting this week or in the next week. And the rummage sale coming up this Friday. So and uh, I believe there's lots of stuff already getting ready for that. So and there's, I know it takes a long time to set up. And next week is, um, we have on October 1st, the Worldwide Communion and Joint Worship at Knox. Fraser. Yes. Remember, it's at 10.30, not 11. They're upping theirs to come at 10.32. So, uh, because uh, Sandra still, Reverend Sandra still has to go out to Pro Creek first. So, anyway, 10.30 at Knox next week, and it's communion. Okay. It's a worldwide community. And we'll have our choir there. And I do notice there's a prayer show meeting on October 2nd, which is a good segue to this thank you letter, thank you card that we got. Somebody who received a, um, a, um, a prayer show. And it says, your thoughtfulness was special and very timely too. How good is to know people such as you. This to Zion Church, thank you for keeping me in your thoughts this time, that your prayer shawl it was so beautiful and my favorite color. I hope all your days are blessed and full of light. It has been um, years since I've been seen you all, but I feel and appreciate your love. Thank you, Hannah. And is there any other announcements? Yes, Hannah Davis. I believe so, yes. Oh, wow. Excellent. Yes. So that's the connection right there. So, yeah. And um, there is um, announcements or celebrations. And I know of one celebration that's actually today. And she's right near the back. It's, and she it's the person who sends out all the birthday cards for everybody, and that's Jean's birthday. So happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jean. Happy birthday to So is there any other celebrations? I know Jean tops the list, so that's... <laughs> yes. Oh, there we go. Trout Creek, and I already... When I was there, they had the stuff out. Uh, they've already made some pies already um, for a small group, but they're making another batch. Uh, we have Trout Creek is making apple pies for a fall fundraiser. So $5 for the small pie. Um, one dozen five inch pies at 15 and uh, then they have the uh, or yeah fifty dollars for the dozen and the 15 for the 10 inch pie and if if you eat those pies 
I will just give a plug that Powassan is doing their prize at the end of October, and that's apple pies as well. And Art Barfoot realized I was good at making pastry after tasting one of my fair pies, so I am on the pastry crew for that, uh, <laughs> for, for making of those pies. And it, it, it's actually good. I feel like doing a sermon when they have the pie making because we have 50 people there making pies. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, better than church, yes. <laughs> okay, and we will move, and any other news? Okay, we'll move on to our gathering song. Now we will take time to acknowledge the land. Okay. We acknowledge that we are gathered on Anishinaabe territory under the Williams Treaty of 1923. For thousands of years, the first peoples of this place have cared for the land, even as the land cared for them. Guided by the wisdom of their traditions and their ancestors, they have been taught that the circle of life is embraced and embracing. Let us carry on this wisdom. Let us live into right relations with love and respect. And actually, I found out when um, this was read at... Um, at Trout Creek this morning, I found it very well written, and at, um, at Chisholm and Poisson, we change them every month, so I'm going to borrow this for one of those months <laughs> to do that. It's very well written. And now we will light the Christ candle as a reminder of the light of Christ given to us all, a symbol of Christ's presence each and every day. Oh, this one's pretty high tech. How do you do it? There we go. Wow, I learned something today. <laughs> and now I invite you uh, to follow um, for the responsive call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. The Lord hears the cries of the people. Give thanks to the Lord. The works of the Lord are great. Remember what God has done. Give thanks, thanks to, to the Lord. Lord. God has done miracles, and the Lord always remembers God's covenant. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the Lord. Lord. Glory and praise is due to the Lord. And now our first hymn is uh, Morning Has Broken.
And now we will say together the opening prayer. Let us pray. Guide our way, caretaker God, in the wilderness of our lives, offer us bread of heaven, that we may taste your spirit and be nourished in body and soul. Reveal your presence among us and show us the tender mercies of your love. In joy and jubilation we pray. Amen. Well, it's time for Young at Heart, and I know we do Young at Heart because there's no children here today, but I usually just ask a few questions um, during there. So who's ever been hungry? Okay. And how do you feel when you're hungry? What what you what you say what you say there? Crabby, okay. Thought you said something else, but that's good. To do. <laughs> so and so you do that. So you sort of what sort of so you feel crabby, and that's one thing that goes there. Is there any other things you feel? Headache. Headache. That's a good one. Cranky. Cranky. Okay. Yes, and somehow you learn that when you're little that uh, yeah, you get cranky, <laughs> especially. And I think that's just a natural thing that happens is you, you um, when you get hungry, that's your way of saying that you're hungry. And um, yeah, even I get um, what, and we call that hangry. And I get hangry sometimes when I was up in in uh, Port Law and Golden Valley, I'd come back and I'd be trying to do so many things and Sanders like Fraser eat. So <laughs> I don't know if you have that with your spouses or not that you have to tell them to eat sometimes and uh, sometimes you just don't make sense when you're when you're hangry. But in our scripture today we hear about people being hangry but God finds a way to feed us, whether it's um, with real food or whether God um, feeds us spiritually. And sometimes we get hangry if we're not fed spiritually as well. So let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you listen to our cries and you feed us spiritually and, and with food as well. We ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. And now our young and hard hymn is This Is God's Wondrous World.
As we begin a new week, let us come to God in a time of confession, seeking to become a new person in all that we do. Let us pray the prayer of confession. God of infinite patience, we turn complaining into an Olympic sport. The journey is too long, the road is hard, and our feet hurt. We're hungry and bored. This isn't what we signed up for. You've heard it all before. You'll hear it all again. Yet you never forsake us in our grumbling. Shower us with your manifold blessings and open our lips to sing songs of gratitude. For we are weary of your complaining and long to be the fresh start. Amen. Rejoice, you who seek the Lord. Count your blessings, not your troubles. For in acts of gratitude, you will find peace. Thanks be to God. In anthem time. Scripture this morning is taken from Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 to 15. Manna and the Quail In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. 
but you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. Some of you may remember the Snickers ad on TV where Joe Pesci is with a friend and they are talking to two prospective dates at a party. And Pesci takes the vibes of the two young women wrong and starts to get angry. His friend then takes him aside and hands him a Snickers bar and says, take this and eat it. He asks the friend why, and the friend says, because you get a little angry when you're hungry. Then after he eats it, he turns into a college-age student and goes back to talk with the prospective dates. And the commercial finishes off by saying, you're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. The not you when you are hungry is translated in the term hangry, and God satisfies our hunger. Just like the commercial, the people of Israel became hangry. Biblical commentators and historians state that when we reach this scripture selection, it has been one month since the people of Israel were allowed to leave Egypt and begin a new free life. The place where they were in their journey was appropriately named the Desert of Sin. It is in this Desert of Sin that the people began to get hangry. The provisions they had brought with them, the unleavened bread, was gone. Since it was in the desert, there is no food in sight. And in hunger, they started to take it out on Moses and Aaron, the leaders of the tribe. They said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, 
when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this holy assembly with hunger. In this statement, they were questioning the authority of Moses and Aaron. They had second thoughts about following them out of Egypt. In their being hangry, they began to doubt that God was with them. In being hangry, they forgot the many great things that God had done to ensure their survival. They forgot about God's hand and the plagues that eventually led to their freedom. They had forgotten that God had delivered them safely across the Red Sea on dry land. And they had forgotten the promise that was given to Abraham and Sarah so long ago. In the desert of sin, they were hangry, and they were turning not only against Moses and Aaron, they were turning against God. Hearing the cries, hearing the hangry remarks, God is upset. God is sand saddened and responds to the cries. God, like the friend in the commercial, realizes that the people are not acting like the loving people that God created. God, like the friend in the commercial, satisfies the hunger of the people. God declares to Moses that I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. After hearing this, Moses instructed Aaron to draw near to the, and say to the crowd, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. When the people drew near, God appeared in the cloud. God said to Moses, I've heard the complaining of the Israelites Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. That night they received the meat in the form of quail. And then in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. The people asked what it was, and Moses stated that it is the bread of the Lord, the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. There is enough for them to survive, and on the instruction to collect twice as much on the on the sixth day, it was a reminder of the creation narrative, where God provided and created things for six, six days, and on the seventh day took a rest. The seventh day was meant to be a day that the people would remember that God creates and God provides and that God satisfies. God satisfied the hunger of the people and they were more at ease when they were fed. There are times that the people still continue to feel hangry, the people of Israel. The people of Israel were getting hangry and there was division among them. They were missing the connection they had with God. Some were hoarding the word of God while others did not receive any. Some were angry with God that they were under Roman rule. God heard that the people were hangry and this time instead of sending manna, God responded by sending Jesus. God heard the cries of the people. God heard the cries of the oppressed. God was upset hearing their, those cries. In their moment of being hangry, the people forgot the great things God had done. They forgot that God had led the people out of Egypt. They forgot about the manna and the quail. They forgot that God sent them to the promised land. And they forgot that God returned them to the promised land after they were sent in exile. In this hangry moment, the people fought against each other. 
Some hoarded the resources while others suffered. God heard the cries and instead of setting man in quarrel, God sent Jesus to show that they were loved. God sent Jesus to satisfy the spiritual hunger that the people had. The people were satisfied with the presence of Jesus. In him they could see a future, but many were still hangry and many doubted what Jesus was doing. Many went against Jesus and he was put on trial and he was sent to die. In his death, hope was dashed. The spiritual food was now gone and it seemed like there would be no more. The people were hangry once again. They were not themselves and even some of them denied knowing him to save their own lives. But like the manna arriving in the morning, new life, new spiritual food arrived the first Easter morning. God satisfied the hangry people through the resurrection of Jesus. God in love satisfied the hunger of the people by giving a path to everlasting life in his resurrection. Like the commercial and like the times in our young and hard time, each one of us becomes hangry. When faced with the challenge, we forget many great things that God has done for us. We panic and blame others for things that go wrong. We, like the character in the commercial, get angry with someone when they say the wrong things. Sometimes we enter a desert of sin in our lives and we forget about God's presence. We cry out in anger and take it out on others. Sometimes when things go wrong, we blame our leaders and we blame God. God hears when we are hangry and God is upset to hear us being hangry, but God does respond and God loves us. God feeds us spiritually and others through the Holy Spirit. God feeds us with love and understanding. God feeds us when friends take us aside and tell us we're not ourselves when we're hangry. God feeds us spiritually through our friends and family and through our church family. God not only provides nutritional nourishment, God feeds us spiritually by having people pray for us, by sending get well cards, by people reaching out to help us when we face difficult situations. As we face these situations, this scripture reminds us of the many great things God has done in the past. And it gives us hope for many great things that God will do in the future. God will satisfy our hunger and God will feed us. Like the friend in the commercial, we can notice when others are hangry. When we notice others hangry, we're called to offer God's love and understanding. We're called to satisfy the hunger of others by offering a smile, offering a hug, and reminding those that are hangry they are loved by you and they are loved by God. We are called to remind them of the many great things that God has done and that the God of love will fulfill our hunger and fulfill our needs. Thanks be to God. Amen. And speaking of hunger, our next hymn will be 460. It's normally a communion hymn, but it suits this perfectly, All Who Hunger.
And speaking of hunger and feeding, we um, are given many gifts by God, and it's now time to share our gifts with others. It's now time to take the offering. Gracious God, you provide bread in the wilderness and life-giving waters in the desert. We offer you our thanks and praise. May our gifts and offerings bless your world, that all may be blessed and all may find purpose and passion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, a minute for mission. I believe we have Heather coming up again. <laughs> Listening and learning on the path of reconciliation. When Alf Dumont's Roman Catholic father and Anishinaabe mother asked the priest serving the Shawanican Reserve to marry them, the priest rejected their request advising them to marry someone of their own kind. Nearby, a United Church minister had a different response. He told the couple he had just two rules. If you have differences, talk them out. And just try to get along. Dad and Mom said, I think we can do that. They brought together First Nations understanding and non-First Nations understanding. That's how, how I came to the church, Dumont recounts, in a United in Learning webinar. Dumont spent his life as a spiritual leader, serving the United Church as a minister, while staying connected with his traditional indigenous spirituality. His memoir, The Other Side of the River, From Church Pew to Sweat Lodge, opens in a new tab, shares stories of how Dumont walks between the two worlds of indigenous and settler, traditional spirituality and Christianity. Part of the struggle with me in life has, was to find out who I was as Anishinaabe and who I was as French, Irish, and English mix, Dumont shares. With a foot on both sides of the river, Dumont's words eloquently draw together spiritual threads there are seven truths in some of the Anishinaabe teaching. Love, courage, respect, humility, truth, wisdom, and honesty. But you can't have one of those teachings or truths without having the others. So you can't have respect without love. You can't have truth without humility, explains Dumont. I took those underlying teachings and applied them to the four teachings on love. Love God, love your neighbor, 
love your enemy, love yourself. You can't have one teaching without the other. You can't love God if you don't truly love yourself. You cannot love your neighbor unless you truly love God. In an interview, Broadview Magazine asks Dumont to weigh in on the future of reconciliation. Part of the struggle has to do with learning to walk together again. It means being as open as we can, he says. You can't bring a gift that I don't have. I bring a gift that you may not have. As we share, we learn from the gifts that we have been given. Your gifts through mission and service help support the creation and publication of luminous, timely work like Dumont's book, as well as the webinar discussions and education events that follow. Through listening and learning, we take important steps toward forward on the journey toward reconciliation. And now let us take some time for prayer. Let us pray for the worlds of, of needs of the worlds. And when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond by saying, hear our prayer. Holy God, who hears our cries and pities our groans, you are ever faithful. We welcome you with our petitions for ourselves and our community. For our church and its leaders, that they be of open mind and open heart, that they may be the Christian leaders you have called them to be, and that the church be an instrument of love justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For our country and global community, that all may be peaceful, fair, and respectful of all peoples, no matter their religion, color, gender, or kind of government. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For our local community, for, many, for the many organizations that are part of this community, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those who are overlooked in our society, the poor, the young, the old, the bereaved, and the oppressed, help us to see them and be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And for the special intentions that we hold in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious and loving God, we know that you hear us and are always with us. And we thank you in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our final hymn is actually from the old hymn books, the Songs of the Gospel, and it's number 51, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken.
will be times and situations where you will get hangry. Know that during those times, the God of love hears your cries and will provide the nourishment you need. Having been fed, you are called to share God's love and nourishment with others. As you go sharing that love and nourishment, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen.